happy to welcome uh, Julian Watson, uh, Julian Principal Analysts at uh, Omdia. Hello, Julian. Yeah, good morning, Susie. Many thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's to always a pleasure. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure to have you here and a pleasure to start the day with um, with you and, of course, with uh, uh, the the latest uh, the latest developments on the wholesale scene. I guess um, I know you've been sort of uh, screening uh, customer requirements in the wholesale environment, so really eager to see how that has changed since uh, since last year. And certainly, I think you have a few also insights on the roaming and travel mobility trends. So really eager to uh, to hear your views on this, uh, um, Julian. And I'll join you at the end of your session uh, to uh, to to have a quick discussion with you. Thank you very much. Sure, sounds sounds good. So many many thanks uh, for joining uh, me today. Uh, so as uh, Susie says, I'm going to talk a little bit about evolving wholesale customer requirements, and uh, and also talk a little bit about eSIM and travel mobility. So just a little bit of context um, before before I move on to the the nitty gritty of wholesale customer requirements. So just want to give you a little bit of a perspective around the size of the uh, the wholesale uh, market. So here you can see that you know wholesale in terms of fixed and mobile wholesale revenues is a significant revenue contributor to uh, to European incumbents. So here you can see that uh, fixed and mobile wholesale revenues account for about a fifth of the domestic uh, total revenue of the big five European incumbents but uh, of course um, wholesale is also incredibly important uh, to enable all sorts of compelling retail services as well so we do see uh, a range of new providers uh, moving to this sector potentially disrupting traditional wholesale and retail relationships which i'll talk a little bit about later so i think really the key priorities for uh, for wholesale providers nowadays is to continually innovate to digitalize wholesale processes and address the challenges of today, such as around fraud, for instance, and provide a platform for generating new services and revenues from things like QS dependent network slicing, for instance. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, a cut from our annual wholesale customer survey. So we run run this pretty much every year or so. And uh, one of the key questions that we ask uh, wholesale customers, not only MNOs and MVNOs, but systems integrators, uh, cloud service providers, uh, fixed operators too, so one of the key questions is how important are various criteria uh, to wholesale customer when deciding which wholesale supplier to use or partner with? So what you're seeing here is a cut of responses among MNOs and MVNOs, um, and they assess what factors are most critical to them. So you can see the critical responses highlighted in blue. Um, so as you can see, a pricing, financial stability, and quality of digital tools were deemed to be the three most important or most critical wholesale supplier criteria in 2024, in our 2024 survey. Um, and that really doesn't actually represent too much change over previous years. We've been running this for about 20 years or so. So in terms of pricing, the requirements uh, from wholesale customers are not only around, you know, the, the usual feedback about pricing levels, but also about transparency and flexibility. So in terms of flexibility, not only about, for instance, volume discounts, but also contract flexibility, allowing customers to, to upgrade, to reconfigure, to swap out services within the course of their, their contract without financial penalty penalty so a shift if you like towards the nas model financial stability has been a really important wholesale customer requirement over the last three years or so i think prior to that it wasn't so important among the 
18 or so criteria that we we list here. Uh, obviously, key reasons are the uh, the impact of the the cost of living crisis, the higher energy costs, which are hitting the bottom line of you know, households and businesses and the telecoms industry as a whole. Um, so I think the key thing for wholesale providers here is to sort of instill confidence in the resilience of your business model and also your ability to continue to invest in upgrading and expanding your network, but also importantly, uh, investing in your digital tools. So speak of digital tools, we're talking about portals and APIs here that enable customers to monitor, manage uh, services that they procured. Um, but I think in the future, um, it's also about leveraging not only APIs to, to procure services, to see availability, to manage services on an ongoing basis, but to leverage network APIs uh, as, a, as you'll hear probably from other presenters today, to create and custom customize services around fraud and security, but also quality on demand too. So you can see here, innovation uh, ranks really highly, well, about fifth in terms of the 18 most critical wholesale supplier selection criteria. And in a similar question that we ask about you know, what wholesale customers think are going to be important in the future. Innovation always ranks, you know, either second or third. Um, and I think the reason why it ranks so highly is because there's an acknowledgement that continuing innovation uh, within the wholesale industry is required to address both our known challenges today around fraud, around security, around effectively monetizing messaging, for instance, but also to provide the technology backbone for new services, for instance, around network slicing or very highly performance sensitive uh, services in a roaming environment. So this is a cut on the on the next slide, if I can bring it up um, from our wholesale innovation analyzers. So we um, we run these analyzers every year. We pick out what we think are the most uh, outstanding innovations across not only the mobile arena, but uh, but also optical transport and, and network access too. So I think a couple of innovations I'd like to highlight from 2023 and 2022. First, uh, AST Space Mobile actually making two-way voice calls from space work and demonstrating that. Now, this is part of the emerging direct-to-device or space-to-device industry. So other key players that you may be partnering with or considering to partner with are, are Link and the sort of ever ubiquitous Starlink. Um, in a, and in effect, this is all about providing connectivity from space, from LEO satellites to unmodified devices, whether they be smartphones or IoT devices or other types of devices too. Uh, and what problem this is seeking to solve is providing uh, connectivity to underserved areas both in developed and emerging market. So MNOs are a really key uh, channel to market for these players, whether it be ASD Space Mobile or Starlink. And initially what we're seeing is the uh, the rollout in, the, in this year at least of some high latency services, so less performance sensitive services such as SMS and messaging. And as the networks um, and constellations get get rolled out. We'll see the launch of more performance sensitive services such as voice and data to other innovation I'd like to highlight from 2022 is the uh, multi operator uh, proof of concept that demonstrated a 50% reduction in latency using local breakout in a roaming environment. And of course, 
cooperation between MNOs and wholesalers is really critical to uh, making all of this work, making network slicing, making you know performance sensitive services work in pretty challenging environments where data needs to uh, traverse uh, backbone networks, ac access networks, and potentially uh, across borders too. So I'm just going to move on to a few thoughts about eSIM now, just checking time. I think I'm okay for time. Um, so last year, we did a survey of um, MVNOs on uh, their plans for eSIM, um, and including in those MVNOs were sub-brands of uh, MNOs that were targeting, for instance, some specific demographics such as such as youth, such as ethnic markets. Um, so what we found from the survey, which was, I think, in mi the middle of last year, of around 120 MVNOs, was that about 60% had yet to deploy or offer a commercial eSIM service. I think probably that uh, percentage is going to be uh, significantly lower this year, as we've seen a range of different retail players commercialize eSIM services. So about a third of the respondents in 2023 um, were planning to source eSIM from their host M MNO, their host mobile network operator. And the rest were either going to develop eSIM through in-house development or partnership with a third party vendor. So the question you can see on this slide uh, relates to target current and future use cases. As you can see, um, many respondents of the 120 or so uh, selected more than one use case, um, but people roaming um, was the most widespread use case. As we said, though, nearly half of the respondents um, either have adopted or plan to adopt eSIM for local connectivity, so for in-country connectivity too. So I think which is which is quite interesting, given that there's potential for eSIM in uh, combination with telecoms as a service uh, models to really disrupt the local access market in a similar way that we're seeing some disruption uh, for the for the travel um, mobility market too. So I think what we what we did here is um, we looked at some of the partners of uh, different types of retail companies um, that are that are launching uh, travel eSIM services. Um, so we provided here a breakdown of the travel eSIM partnerships uh, between five key vendors. You can see here from one global down to flexi Rome and different type of retailers so I think it's perhaps not surprising that uh, the airlines and airports are really at the forefront uh, front of the queue in terms of targeting tourists at either their point of departure or destination so these are the really the front runners in the retail uh, roaming space um, but i think it's really interesting to see from my viewpoint that um, a couple of small mnos uh, particularly in emerging markets that perhaps don't have the uh, negotiating power to um to, to, to get in really compelling uh, traditional wholesale roaming arrangements, they're also partnering with third-party eSIM providers. Um, so this potentially has the uh, potential to disrupt the way in which MNOs uh, procure and enable their roaming services. Um, I think as per the previous slide, um, if I just head back to that, local distribution, uh, local connectivity for dig digital distribution 
um, is a, going to be a really interesting space um, going forward. Um, I think in combination with telecoms as a service, um, eSIM has the potential to disrupt um, this space. So here we see players like Gigs and Oxio with their sort of telco as a service model or MVNO in a box um, business model, really easing the process for all types of brands, uh, whether they be they whether they be retailers, whether it be other types of businesses to offer mobile services using their own brands either for their internal employees or their customers. So I think this is an area that is going to evolve pretty, pretty quickly. So just checking time here, I think I'm okay. So just as a quick re re recap, I think in terms of the wholesale differentiators we're seeing, um, not only related to mobile, but actually more broadly in the wholesale space is pricing flexibility. So the giving the uh, potential uh, for retail customers, for wholesale customers to reconfigure, to swap out, to upgrade uh, their services uh, within the course of their contract Ease of onboarding is always going to be really important. So this is not only means onboarding a new customer, but enabling them to change uh, their service preferences via portal, via API during the course of their contract. This might may mean adding a new geography, for instance, uh, within a wholesale roaming contract. It's really important based on the conversations that we have with various whole wholesalers to be able to articulate a record and roadmap for innovation. So they understand that you're addressing today's known problems and tomorrow's revenue opportunities. I think eSIM is certainly initially going to have a big impact on the travel market, on the roaming market, enabling all sorts of retailers to add um, roaming to their their current portfolio, whether it be an airline, whether it be a financial service provider, but it's going to ripple. The impact is going to ripple beyond that into local connectivity too. And I think this is particularly in the case where we see uh, the innovations around telecoms as a service, telecoms in a box, MVNO in the box, um, services by the likes of Gears, gigs, Oxio, and, and others that could make it really easy for, for retailers to launch their own mobile services. Um, I think, um, Susie, that is... Um, that is quite comprehensive already, and a lot of uh, topics that I'm delighted to see we'll have on, uh, on the agenda uh, today. So thank you very much for this... Uh, very valuable first insights. Um, um, to the audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to jump and uh, uh, key them in the chat. We'll, uh, we'll receive the, them at our end and, and surely we'll address those. So please do use the Q&A uh, section to address your, your questions. Um, I have a couple of uh, questions for you actually that are you know, really interesting, and, and that has triggered some uh, some 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 uh, some questions on my side. The first one is you you did talk about digital tools, and obviously this will be uh, massively important coming coming uh, coming up. Um, how, in your views, are these going to evolve? I know you've been mentioning APIs and network APIs. You know, eager to hear more about that if you can. Yeah, sure. Thank th th thanks, Susie. I think um, I I APIs is a particularly interesting one. So one of the questions we asked in our wholesale survey is sort of what digital tools are you using? And um, portals are still way more widely used than APIs. And I think one of the, for things like, you know, service ordering, monitoring and management of services, I think one of the reasons is that um, uh wholesale customers typically need to transact with multiple providers and if they have sort of proprietary apis that makes it a lot more complicated and complex um, to do so so i think efforts by 
TM Forum, uh, Metro Ethnet Forum, I think partners of yours to standardize APIs is really welcome. Um, sort of moving moving forward, I think, as you'll probably hear today, I think the, the focus will shift from APIs for procuring services for managing ongoing services to creating new services in the future. So mm -hmm. here we see um, the initiatives by a range of operators around, around as, you, as I'm sure you're aware, around, around camera um, to develop standardized APIs. And I think what we're seeing initially is that these APIs um, are focused primarily on sort of anti-fraud and security use cases, so device location, swim, SIM swap, things like that. Um, but it will be that much more challenging to um, develop commercial a APIs around quality on demand, um, given the sort of need for 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 end-to-end -end performance levels. So. So it's all it's all work in progress. I should say that the audience shouldn't sort of ignore the the efforts of some individual operators that have had some success with with network API such as Telenor. But perhaps all of this is slightly under the radio radar. But they should certainly look at who is doing well with with network APIs already. A lot of things are unfolding, and I'm sure. Um many uh many developments ahead for us in this api scene so certainly something to uh to keep on the radar and 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 look at uh at how things are developing we'll have a specific session on the api much later on during the day and we'll come back to those developments so it will be also interesting to hear the views of those uh those, those panelists as to how they see those developing. Um, I think we have a question on uh, uh, from from the audience, so I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm uh, bringing that to you, Julian. Will eSIM go the same way A2P SMS has, i.e., companies other than the MNOs get super active in that? Sorry, can you? I didn't quite catch that, Susie. Can you? Can you repeat so, that? Will Will eSIM go the same way as two uh, as uh, uh, two way a uh, two p sms has the same way a two p sms has sorry and ie for example companies other than the mnos getting super active well i guess this is a question about sort of potential disintermediation is is isn't it so um so so yeah i think we're we're already seeing that aren't we so i think i previously said that some smaller mnos are actually partnering with some of these third parties in vendors to to uh power or to augment their their existing retail roaming services so I think yeah, some of these ec eSIM vendors are that sort of embed the technology and combine sort of global or international wholesale roaming relationships to offer sort of global services. I think this is already already happening. Um, I think you know certainly for the audience of of, of MNOs. I think they need to probably think about um, who to who to partner with um in this space so they they benefit from the from the opportunities that are going to emerge uh, emerge from this so as i said before i think players like oxio and gigs um are with their telecoms as a service models are seeing some traction and are potentially disruptive yes yeah, so a lot of a lot is happening obviously in this eSIM space and as you mentioned earlier there's a lot of uh Certainly, roaming will be impacted. Disruption will see uh, the, the 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 landscape will uh, will be very uh, uh, interesting to look at how the landscape uh, of of those all those operators is developing and 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 how to best approach um, uh, this market in the in the future. So, thank you very much, uh, Julian, for this uh, first uh, first session of the day. It was a great insight from you, as always. A big thank you. Um, and as as you all know, that session will be available 
uh, to watch uh, later on again live uh, on our um, on our website. Um, many thanks, and talk thank to you. you very soon, Julian. Yeah, speak to you soon. Many thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.